Good morning. May God's peace, love, and grace be with you. We have come to the end of this journey about the gifts of the Holy Spirit. We know now the difference of the gifts and the fruits of the Spirit. We know that if we're going to talk about the gifts of the Spirit, all we need to do is read 1 Corinthians chapter 12. We can study and read the whole chapter, and there we will understand what they are and what they are for. Now, if we want to learn about the fruits of the Spirit, we can open Galatians chapter 5, and there also we will be able to understand the qualities of those who are in constant communion with God. We even understood the meaning of some of the words that are less used today and harder to know, such as long-suffering. So today, we will meditate in something very important. Many will say, look, some are giving the gift of healing, others the gift of prophecy, or diverse tongues. I think my gift is so inferior to those. I just have a simple gift, one gift. Look at them, so and so has so many gifts. They are important gifts. Sister, brother, we are part of a body and there is a unity of members in this body. Let us read 1 Corinthians chapter 12, starting on verse 12 and on, and hopefully we will understand that God gives to each according to His will, and whichever gift we are given, it is necessary for the body of the church, and no one of them is less than the other. All are necessary and important for the function of the church. Let's read. For as the body is one and had many members, and all of the members of that one body, being many, are one body, so also is Christ. For by one Spirit we are all baptized into one body, whether we be Jews or Gentiles, whether we be bound or free and have been all made to drink into one spirit. For the body is not one member, but many. If the foot shall say, Because I am not the hand, I am not of the body, is it therefore not of the body? And if the ear shall say, Because I am not the eye, I am not of the body, is it therefore not of the body? If the whole body were an eye, where were the hearing? If the whole were hearing, where would there be the smelling? But now has God set the members, every one of them, in the body, as it had pleased Him. And if they were all one member, where were the body? But now are they many members, yet but one body. And the eye cannot say unto the hand, I have no need of thee, nor again the head to the feet, I have no need of you. Nay, much more those members of the body which seem to be more feeble are necessary, and those members of the body which we think to be less honorable, upon this we bestow more abundant honor, and our uncomely parts have more abundant comeliness. For our comely parts have no need, but God hath tempered the body together, having given more abundant honor to that part which lacketh, that there should be no schism in the body, but that the members should have the same care one for another. And whether one member suffer, all the members suffer with it, or one member be honored, all the members rejoice with it. Now ye are the body of Christ, and members in particular. And God has set some in the church, first apostles, secondarily prophets, thirdly teachers, after that miracles, then gifts of healing, helps, governments, diversity of tongues. Are all apostles? Are all prophets? Are all teachers? Are all workers of miracles? Have all the gifts of healing, 
do all speak with tongues, do all interpret, but covet earnestly the best gift, and yet show I unto you a more excellent way. Though I speak with the tongues of men and of angels, and have no charity, I am become a sounding brass or a tinkling cymbal. And though I have the gift of prophecy, and understand all mysteries, and all knowledge, and though I have all faith, so that I could remove mountains, and have no <coughs> charity, I am nothing. And though I bestow all my goods to feed the poor, and though I give my body to be burned, and have no charity, it profiteth me nothing. Charity suffer long, and is kind. Charity envy not. Charity vaulteth not itself, is not puffed up, does not behave itself unseemingly, seeketh not her own, is not easily provoked, thinketh no evil, rejoiceth not in iniquity, but rejoice in the truth, beareth all things, believeth all things, hopeth all things, and endureth all things. Charity never failed, but whether there be prophecies, they shall fail. Whether there be tongues, they shall cease. Whether there be knowledge, it shall vanish away. For we know in part, and we prophesy in part. But when that which is perfect is come, then that which is in part shall be done away. When I was a child, I spake as a child, and I understood as a child. I thought as a child, but when I became a man, I put away childish things. For now we see through a glass, darkly, but then face to face. Now I know in part, but then shall I know, even as also I am known. And now abideth faith, hope, charity, this three, but the greatest of this is charity. Why did I read chapter 13 also? We are a unit, and in reading chapter 12, we see that we are part of the body of Christ, and each of us is equally important, and in chapter 13, we see what is the best gift the gift that we need to have as members of the Church of Christ is love. Chapter 13 is very clear in saying that all other gifts will at some point vanish. But the gift that we need to have and that will strengthen us and help us to understand that we are all important as members of the family of God is love. Faith, hope, and love are the only ones that will stand forever, and the greatest, the best, is love. If we love each other with the love here described, the Holy Spirit will work through us in a wonderful way. The Gospel will be preached as the last message for this world. But we need to be full of this love, this eternal love. May we seek to have the gift of the Holy Spirit so that we can do our part in the work as God sees best, but that above all we may have the gift of love. God bless you. God bless us as we continue to walk on the journey of our life as a true Christian.